Metabolic Control Analysis, MCA in short, is a mathematical framework used to assess how the control upon the steady state values of the system's variables is distributed among the different reactions. Let's break this down. Let's consider this simple biochemical network. If we let the system follow its dynamics, it will reach a steady state. These two plots, for example, show how the concentration of the different species and the fluxes of the different reactions change over time. As you can see, after an initial transient, all the variables reach a plateau, and they don't change anymore. This means that the steady state is reached. Now, the question is, what happens to this steady state if we change the activity of an enzyme, for example, the enzyme catalyzing the first reaction? In general, we expect that the system will adjust to this perturbation and that a new steady state will be reached. This is what happens in our example, where at time 80 seconds we changed the activity of the enzyme, in particular we doubled it. Now, we may want to quantify how different these two steady states are. More specifically, we may be interested in how much the steady state concentration of a given species or the steady state flux of a given reaction changed as a consequence of that perturbation. The control coefficients are used precisely for this purpose. There are two kinds of control coefficients in MCA, the flux control coefficients and the concentration control coefficients. The flux control coefficients are defined as the ratio between the relative change in the steady state flux carried by some reaction and the relative change in the activity of the enzyme we have perturbed. Likewise, the concentration control coefficient is defined as the ratio between the relative change in the steady state concentration of a species and the relative change in the activity of the enzyme perturbed. In both cases, the change in the enzyme activity must be understood as the perturbation we introduced in the system, while the change in the variable, either flux or concentration, is a consequence of such perturbation. The higher the control coefficient, the higher the control that the enzyme exerts on that variable. The reason for the perturbation to be taken infinitesimal is that the system's behavior is nonlinear. What we mean by that is that the response of the system, for example the change in the flux J or the concentration S, is not proportional to the change in VI. The values of these two ratios, then, depend on the amplitude of the perturbation. This introduces an ambiguity in how to define the control coefficients. To do away with such ambiguity, the control coefficients are defined for infinitesimal perturbations. When the perturbations are infinitesimal, or very small, the behavior of the system can be approximated by linear response, and these ratios become unequivocally defined. Now, let's perform a metabolic control analysis in COPASI. For this example, I use a modified version of Pritchard and Kell's model of yeast glycolysis. You can download the original model from JWS Online or Biomodels. To calculate the control coefficients in COPASI, we select Metabolic Control Analysis from the task subtree and click Run. This is the result of our analysis. This first tab contains the values of the elasticities. We'll go back to this later. For now, let's skip it and go to the second tab. In this tab, we have all the flux control coefficients organized in a matrix. Rows and columns have the same name but they mean different things. The rows represent the fluxes of the reactions, while the columns represent the enzymes that catalyze the reactions. So this, for example, is the control that the enzyme HK, exokinase, exerts on the flux of the reaction catalyzed by TPI, triose phosphate isomerase. It is easy to see that if our biochemical network has N reactions, this matrix will have n by n entries. Please note that the control coefficients can be negative. This means that if we increase the activity of this enzyme, the flux of this reaction will decrease. Like in all matrices displayed by COPASI, there is also a color code to help you. Intense shades of green are associated with higher control coefficients. Intense shades of red with highly negative coefficients. The pale cells are associated with coefficients close to zero. 
you will also notice that some entries of this matrix have the same number across a given column. This means that the control exerted by the enzyme on the corresponding fluxes is the same. The reason is that these fluxes are bound to be equal at steady state due to the stoichiometry of the network. As a consequence, a perturbation on the activity of an enzyme will have the same effect on the steady state flux of such reactions. In this other tab, you have the matrix of the concentration control coefficients. The columns, again, represent the perturbed enzymes, but the rows, this time, represent the species that were affected. So, if we have n reactions and m species, this will be an m by n matrix. Again, the color code will help you to identify the highest coefficients and their sign. At the top right corner of each of these tabs, there is a drop-down menu from which you can choose between scaled and unscaled. The scaled control coefficients are those we have introduced before, and they are defined as the ratio between the relative change in the variable, either a flux or a concentration, and the relative change in the parameter, the enzyme activity. Sometimes, however, we are interested in the absolute change of these quantities, and this is when we use the unscaled control coefficients. The unscaled control coefficients are defined as the ratio between the absolute change in the variable and the absolute change in the parameter. Now, let's go back to the tab of elasticities. We consider them last because they are not usually the primal focus of modelers. However, they are important to derive the value of the control coefficients. The elasticities quantify the effect of a metabolite on the flux of a reaction, if that reaction is considered in isolation from the rest of the network. In particular, they are defined as the ratio of the relative change of a reaction flux and the relative change of a metabolite participating in that reaction, either as a reactant, a product, or a modifier. In this case, the change in the metabolite concentration is to be understood as the causing event, and the change in the reaction flux as the observed effect. But remember that this effect is without the presence of the rest of the reactions in the network. So, how the elasticities come into the picture? In COPASI, the control coefficients are not determined by actually perturbing the enzyme activity and recalculating the steady state. Only the reference steady state is retrieved, while the control coefficients are calculated through the stoichiometry matrix and the elasticities using simple matrix algebra. This makes the calculation much faster than explicitly perturbing the system and rerunning a steady state analysis after each perturbation. This is the main reason why elasticities are important in MCA, because they allow us to calculate the control coefficients by analytical means. If you are interested in the maths used to calculate the control coefficients from the stoichiometry matrix and the Jacobian, you can refer to these two papers. We hope you found this video tutorial useful. Thank you for using Copasi.